Welcome to the GSMC Pets Podcast, the show that caters to pet lovers of all kinds. We'll talk about pets on social media, pets doing amazing things, and how to take care of the pets in your life. Whether your pet is a dog, a cat, a llama, hamster, reptile, or something more exotic, you'll find educational and entertaining information on the GSMC Pets Podcast. Howdy, howdy, and thank you for tuning in to the GSMC Pets Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Sam, and my co-host has been naughty, so he is not allowed to be near me right now. (laughs) So we are actually going to be talking about something that many of us pet owners talk about sometimes, but we don't really commit. Kind of really depends on who you are as a person and how experienced you are with being a pet owner. But it's tricks and commands that you should really be teaching your pets. Or, well, if not should, you know, for their own stimulation, basically. So I have a nice, nice list of things that I wanted to talk to you about. And for one thing, it's going to be let's see, dancing, sound, uh, activity. What else? What else? What else? Oh, love. And let's see. I think I wanted to also talk about, well, just rolling over. And then we'll just kind of close about uh, medications for our pets, because that is a huge thing in our household. So let's get started. All right. So you have a date that is very exciting. It's your best little pal. And, well, you just want to go out dancing. But the reality is that some restaurants and get together, um, well, uh, get togethers in general are not really prone to having dogs in there or any kind of pet in their, um, in their business. So now you have to go home and then decide, okay, well, I guess we can just cut a rug over here. And now you need to teach your dog, your dog for sure, how to, how to actually dance. Now for me, I love dancing with my pets. It's very fun when they're willing and Reggie is willing most of the time. I will say that Rody, when we, when he was around, he did not like dancing at all. Even with me and my husband dancing, like he would actually hop at us and try to get my husband away from me because he thought I was, he was hurting me. So there's that. But dancing can be a very fun thing and a very good thing for your pet. So this kind of brings to mind the King of the Hill episode where Hank learned that his son Bobby was was teaching his dog Ladybird to to dance. But Hank was concerned that, oh, well, she's old, her hips and, you know, her joints are not the same as they used to be. So he eventually comes around to it and he teaches her, teaches her a, chore- um, a choreograph that... Um, Almost got them to win, but it was disrupted by the crazy dog that Bill Joe Treve had. So, all that to say is that dancing can actually be a very fulfilling and fun thing for you and your pets. You just have to, you just gotta really get a good bond with them. And also dancing helps with that. So, you need bond to do that and you also get bond from doing that. So how do we actually dance? Well, one of the major things is that you have to have them sit. Now, if they don't know how to sit, if they don't know how to sit, you will have to teach them how to sit. And you know, it's basic dog training. You'll be fine. But let's talk about like, how do you get your dog to start dancing? Now, what you can do is Well, what you will do is you'll have them sit and you're going to have a treat 
for them. And now you're going to just kind of live it, um, have the treat up in the air, and you are going to get your, try your best to get your dog to stand up. And when they stand up fully, that is when you give the treat praise, dance, dance, dance on your end because doggy does not know how to dance yet. But all the kinds of pets, yes, fantastic, you did good. So once you have that down where the where your dog can actually, or your cat, if they can actually stand on their own and keep their balance, fantastic. Now you get to do the kind of fun part where you have the... <laughs> the treat in your hand and you are basically kind of baiting them to go into a big circle. So they stand up and then you start, you start, uh, kind of toying around with the, to- with the treat and hopefully your dog will start you know, circling a little bit. And when they actually start circling, give them a treat, praise, love. Oh my gosh, you're great. You're doing great. And you're going to keep on doing that until they hit a full circle. And, you know, all the time you're saying, you know, oh my gosh, you're doing amazing. Let me pet you. Give me a treat. I'll give you a treat too. All that kind of stuff. And you want to make sure that you're as consistent as possible with your dog and, or cat. So eventually you'll be able to have your dog do this with complete ease and just kind of keeping them in practice is very important because if you don't have your dog dance with you all the time, like I like to do, <laughs> um, your dog is, your dog's gonna not forget, but will be more resistant to it. Cause let's talk about cookie. Cookie is old and she is stuck in her ways. That's just the reality of it. We can, I don't know. We can kind of motivate her a little with, you know, little pets and pushes, but Overall, she does not want to, she's not food motivated. She actually hates food. (laughs) Cookie and I have our own little dance that we do, and it's actually quite fun. So here's how it goes. So Cookie, Cookie has to be in her little bouncy little mood, and it's, oh my gosh, it's adorable when she gets into this mood. But she starts kind of hopping about, and then I start hopping around with her, and then I bend down and I take a little pause and then we dance a little like that. And then she just hops along with me. It's, it's absolutely adorable. And if your pet can do that, fantastic. I mean, dance is a way of expression. There are many ways that people can express themselves while dancing. So I think that for the most part, I think whatever makes you and your dog happy, that's that's the key thing. But if your dog is absolutely not interested in dancing with you, well, I guess let it be. Because you know what? It's not all about you. It is definitely about what your pet and you are comfortable with. And if you just force your dog to do it, it's just going to be the same thing with Rody. He's going to hate being held a certain way. He's going to hate... He's going to hate standing up on his back legs. It's just sad. So again, you want to make sure that your pet is willing and able to do it because, well, I mean, honestly, smaller dogs, like under 40 pounds are, they're easier to to dance with. But, but when you start looking at Great Danes and, um, St. Bernard's, those dogs are quite difficult to even get them willing to stand up on their hind legs. And then think about all the other dogs that, you know, are prone to having back problems, like the dachshund. Like, it's, it's a real thing. And then you also have to think of the dogs that have hip, hip dysplasia as they get older. So, for one thing, you definitely need to think about what is best for your pet. Like, consider their age, consider, like, just any previous injuries they've had, all that kind of stuff. Now, I don't know if a vet would approve of having Ladybird, for instance, uh, dancing like that. They claimed it was doing very well for her joints, but I don't know. I'm getting mis- mixed messaging here now. <laughs> but hey, again, if 
your dog likes it and your or your cat likes it, go ahead. I mean, hey, even if your parrot likes it, awesome. Just do something that is very fun and enjoyable and a good experience between the two of you. Either way, I think it's a great way to just bring life to a party. You know, you guys just kind of go into the center of the dance floor and you start dancing around. And, you know, maybe people will get really excited too and like start dancing around too. And then, I don't know, a really bad pitbull song will hop onto the radio and then everyone's all miserable and realize, huh, we have Spotify, don't we? We have other... We have other ways of listening to music. Why are we listening to the radio? So all that kind of stuff is just, you know, just kind of goes along with the ride. Your dog dances, everyone dances, and then choose the best music possible. And, I mean, your dog will definitely be the life of the party. Anyway, we need to talk about another thing, which is something that I... I've kind of been halfway successful with, and that is telling your dog how to speak and then also getting it to be quiet. So after this commercial break, we will definitely talk about that. You really can't underestimate the importance of having the right creative work for your brand or your product. Whether it's a logo, a website, a book cover, or an ad campaign, you really need a quality design to make that big difference pop and deliver your overall engagement and success in a competitive market. That's where Design Crowd comes in. Design Crowd has over 750,000 designers from Sydney to San Francisco ready to help you with awesome creative ideas. They make crowdsourcing work for you. So if you need a logo or you're working on your creative branding, you can go to designcrowd.com and post a brief describing the design you need. And then within about two to seven days, you'll receive up to over a hundred different designs from designers around the world. Then you pick the best design and approve payment to the designer. So you're only paying for the design that you want. It takes a lot of the guesswork out of freelancing, and out of crowdsourcing. And you don't have to be a huge company like Harvard Business School to use Design Crowd, although they have used it as well. You can start a project on Design Crowd for as little as $99. And if you go right now to designcrowd.com forward slash health and wellness or enter the promo code health and wellness on their website, then our health and wellness listeners will receive up to $150 off of your design project. That's designcrowd.com forward slash health and wellness. We're entering that promo code health and wellness. Are you tired of the same old news? Are you sick of the seemingly endless political spin and negativity? The GSMC America Still Beautiful podcast is a weekly news podcast covering all the top positive and uplifting news stories. We cover stories that will inspire, uplift, and remind you of the good in the world. Tune into the Golden State Media Concepts America Still Beautiful podcast to get all the great and positive news stories of today. Download the GSMC America Still Beautiful podcast on iTunes. Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type GSMC in the search bar. All right, so we are back, and, well, we are going to be talking about one of my favorite things, speak and quiet. (laughs) And Regina has this down halfway. She knows that when I tell her to speak, she definitely barks, but it's the getting her to be quiet. That has always been a little bit of a difficult for me. I mean, you would think that... It would be, well, it's supposed to be easier to teach a dog how to, how to be quiet after being told to speak. And I 
don't know what's going on with me. Maybe I had the yips when it comes to training this animal. Maybe it's just that she's been very irritable lately because of her injury. But, I mean, at least, at the very least, she will be getting better. And I'm going to be so happy when that happens. So, how do you get your dog to speak? Now, (laughs) for me, it was basically having my dog, like, get really excited. So get Regina super excited and you start, you know, you put him in the sit position and then you take out, a, take out a treat and you're basically going to have him stay sit- sitting and you are going to essentially just hold the treat right in front of them where they cannot reach, but you know that they really want it. So hold the treat out and wait for some sort of sound coming out from them. It doesn't have to be a full-blown bark. It could be a whimper. Any sound? Yes, fantastic. Here is a treat. Here is some praise. And let's go ahead and dance because now you know how to dance, buddy. So you continue that process until you can build up to your dog basically barking. So that's that's a great thing. Well, to some. But yeah, once you have your dog barking, you're going to make sure that you are giving them a reward. You are going to love on them. It's great. But now we have to do this other part. It's getting them to be quiet. (laughs) And honestly, if only we could train some people to be quiet, that'd be fantastic. (laughs) And well, yeah, I can think of many people that could definitely gain from learning how to be quiet. But aside from the point, Now, when you want your dog to be quiet after while it's barking, well, here's how I am going to do it now based on this uh, Better Homes and Garden website. Uh, They have some nice little uh, how-tos. So I'm just going to, you know, let you guys know what's going on there. So to continue this process, you are basically going to use the speak command on your dog until they start using noise. Yeah, making noise, you know, the actual bark. And you are not gonna reward your dog until it makes noise. That's the first part there. Now, after that, you're always gonna tell the dog, hush or enough, and just walk away. And you, and that's when you want your dog to stop. So basically you are engaging with them. When you disengage, They should be stopping. They should stop what they're doing. And, you know, you'll want to, like, give give them enough praise for for alternating between this. Because it is is going to be very difficult. Like, hey, you asked me to speak. Now you want me to be quiet? I want to speak to the world now. But, unfortunately, Regina, you can't speak to the whole world. So, mommy has a headache. Please be quiet. (laughs) Now... It is very important to know, too, that, um, well, if your dog is an excessive barker, it's going to definitely have to be in a sitting position. Like, speak, okay, sure, you can have them speak um, while they're standing, but um, for the ones that really do this excessively, the act of sitting down, like, for one thing, disengages them from what they're barking at, and then... Also, they have, you have their eyes, basically. And if you have their eyes, then they are listening to you. So, and this is not my saying. I, I, I was watching a show and that's something that the host was talking about. And it's always worked with me with Regina, just making sure she's actually engaged in what you're doing and saying. That's the important part. Now, so if your dog is doing all that, you want to make sure they're sitting. So in addition to just barking excessively, uh, well, if your dog likes to bark at the window, basically barking at absolutely nothing, which is a thing, I know you, I know you guys know this. And well, I mean, maybe there's a leaf that looks you know, profoundly 
evil, and your dog wants to bark at that leaf. Or, even better, a real-life thing now that I've experienced for, well, basically since the start of me owning my own pets, Rhodey was angry at the mailman. I have no idea why, but it does make me think of this thing I read on, what was it? Just a meme I saw on Facebook. Yes, on Facebook. And, well, basically it's the this dog basically saying, hey, I warned you about this guy. And it's essentially, well, I gave you the punchline, so it's not even funny anymore. But, hey. But basically, every single time that dog was barking and growling at the mailman, well, his... His pet parents never listened to him. And then the night that they have a burglar, well, oh, it happens to be the mailman. I tried to warn you guys, but hey, not my fault now. So a lot of that is just kind of behaviors that maybe they feel like they are, like they're, well, they're definitely being an alarm for you. Because one thing is that dogs that do this are kind of, guarding you, essentially, and guarding its territory. And then, well, they want to make sure that they don't have any intruders because, well, again, that's its safe place. And it also kind of depends on how safe the parents feel. I mean, the parents always ignore the mailman, but you really shouldn't be you know, engaging at all when your dog is barking at the mailman or barking at a leaf, like eventually they will stop and they'll start to get the message that, oh, I'm not getting any attention here just by barking. What else can I do? And then, well, you basically find something to distract them. Like, here's what they can do aside from being at the window, uh, acting like I'm, that they're acting like they're about to maul the, the mailman. So there's that. But that was something that I read before. Like, if you have a dog that tends to bark at certain times of, the, times of the day, maybe a car drives by and, well, dog starts barking, you can actually like have your dog go somewhere else. And it's all about disengaging from this negative behavior that they have or these neg- negative stimuli that they have. And, I mean... <laughs> I had some luck with Rhodey, and I'm hoping that I can get more luck with, um, more luck with Regina now. Because, again, she's young, but it does not help that Cookie is also a very mean dog. I mean, I talk about Cookie as if she's a, you know, a nice little grandma, but she's mean. She's nasty. And that's why I kind of like her. <laughs> but we are now going to talk about, uh, something That is a little more fun, I have to say. And we'll be talking about just basically shaking your hand with your dog or even giving high fives with your dog. So we're going to talk about that after this commercial break. You really can't underestimate the importance of having the right creative work for your brand or your product. Whether it's a logo, a website, a book cover or an ad campaign, you really need a quality design to make that big difference pop and deliver your overall engagement and success in a competitive market. That's where Design Crowd comes in. Design Crowd has over 750,000 designers from Sydney to San Francisco ready to help you with awesome creative ideas. They make crowdsourcing work for you. So if you need a logo or you're working on your creative branding, you can go to designcrowd.com and post a brief describing the design you need. And then within about two to seven days, you'll receive up to over a hundred different designs from designers around the world. Then you pick the best design and approve payment to the designer. So you're only paying for the design that you want. It takes a lot of the guesswork out of freelancing, and out of crowdsourcing. And you don't have to be a huge company like Harvard Business School to use Design Crowd, although they have used it as well. 
you can start a project on Design Crowd for as little as $99. And if you go right now to designcrowd.com forward slash health and wellness or enter the promo code health and wellness on their website, then our health and wellness listeners will receive up to $150 off of your design project. That's designcrowd.com forward slash health and wellness or entering that promo code health and wellness. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter. And download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. are back and we were just talking about barking and how to make it stop and well I figured that we should talk about something fun now because talking about a dog barking and you know screaming at the mailman is not exactly my idea of fun. <laughs> so let's talk about getting your dog to shake your hand and also to give you high fives because you know high fives are the best way of communicating even if we we're not really doing that anymore, I'm, I'm thinking it'll probably just be elbow elbow taps, which honestly that seems pretty cool. But back to this, <laughs> you will most likely continue shaking your dog's paw, so you may as well know how to do it. And when I first, well, when I actually started training Regina to do this. I hadn't even looked this up. It seemed, it was actually pretty, it made sense how the, how everything kind of rolled out pretty much. And what I did, I got a treat in my hand and I closed my fist and I just lowered my hand gradually to her paw that I was wanting her to, to shake with. And as she got, as dogs get more anticipate, anticipatory, maybe, if that's a word, uh, they start anticipating, oh, this treat is coming to me and I want it that this, this container open so I can have it. Like just your dog touching at your, at your hand. Perfect. Give them the treat reward. Oh my gosh. Praise, praise, praise. And then repeat. And you're going to continue repeating that. And you're going to, as you're doing this, you're gradually going to be going up. You're going vertical, not diagonal. You're, well, I guess diagonal backwards. Yeah. So you're basically going to start pulling your hand away with another treat. And you're going to do this process over and over again until it's about chest height for you. Um, not for you, for your dog. And then... That's when you start really um, trying to reinforce that behavior. Again, it's, oh, here's a treat. Here's some praise. I love you. You're the best little dog in the world. And then you uh, continue to repeat. And eventually, this will just become very intuitive for your dog. And I was just absolutely amazed when I, when I actually found, like, consistent success with Regina in this. And I really, really, really needed some consistency and success in my life at that point when I was doing that. But yeah, it's, it's a really cool thing to 
actually feel like you've done that and you were successful at helping your dog be successful at it. But I kind of want to try with Eisen, but he's been, as I said, he's been mean to me, so I want some distance, and I bet he wants distance from me too. But yeah, just now what? What do you do with, you know, shaking a dog's paw? I, I mean, especially when you're not really, when we're not really in a society that shakes hands anymore, it, seems, it feels like. Well, hmm, I don't really know what to think of that. Eh, just continue doing it with your dog, so it'll be fine. But now, high fives. I refuse to give up high fives to my dog. <laughs> and it's actually... Once you have the the shaking hands trick, just down pat, well, it makes it a lot easier to train your dog to, well, give you a high five. And I just want to do a quick brag, and that is that <laughs> Regina learned how to shake her paw with me, well, shake hands with me, um, let's see, about an hour and a half, which is pretty nifty. And she learned how to do a high five within 30 minutes. And I just want to say that my puppy is very, very, very smart and I love her to death. But anyway, we have high fives that are essentially like dramatic handshakes. You could say that. But essentially, you are going to start off basically as you did with the handshake. Start at the chest and start building up to where you finally have your hand up like a high five. And this entire time, again, you are praising. You're telling them how much you love them, how much, um, I don't know, how many treats are they going to be getting? And, oh my gosh, you are going to be able to go outside. We're going to go on a nice walk after this. All that kind of cool stuff. And when they hit your hand as if it's doing a, five, a high five, then it is magic. Let your dog do whatever it wants. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> But yeah, it's a very easy thing to do, very easy thing to try, I guess. And we kind of take that for granted because, hmm, I won't be able to give people high fives anymore. Or, you know, I would have very mixed feelings about giving people high fives now. But, I mean, there are other tricks that you can learn. And I will say that when it comes... <laughs> When it comes to actually doing handshakes with your dog, like, there will be mishaps. I mean, I'm thinking back to a a little video of this family basically, like, celebrating their dog's birthday. And it's a really big, husky-looking lab. And husky, you know what I mean. He's a little overweight. But... Yeah, they bring over his cake and they have a little candle on it and they're leaning over to give it to him and it's like basically handshake area. He takes his paw and he smacks the cake down. <laughs> oh my gosh, I don't know why that's so funny right now. But yeah, just you can see like the behavior over there. Like dog was anticipating, oh, I'm going to be uh, getting this treat. Let me have this treat. And, you know, if they do exactly what you would want them to do and then well cake's ruined sorry buddy but yeah I just it's so interesting how these behaviors are so ingrained in us and how we have the expectations that okay uh teaching your dog how to give you a high five and a handshake you know that's something that's a skill they'll need for the rest of their life right it's no longer really a skill that we need for the rest of our life as of right now. So, I mean, I get some, I get some joy out of giving my Regina a handshake at least, but man, when will that be a, a distant memory? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just going off on the, let's see, the rabbit hole. No, not even the rabbit hole. More like the tiger's den. <laughs> um, but we are going to go on another break, and we are next going to be talking about something that is equally cute and equally disgusting. And I wonder what that is. I'll give you a hint. People do it, 
or at least people who love each other do it, I guess. And, well, maybe, you know, I'll just go ahead and tell you, it's, it's your dog kissing you. And there's a lot of back and forth in my household about, about dogs giving you, you know, kisses and stuff. Again, I feel I have a very mixed household. So, hey, got to talk about it, right? We'll be right back after this commercial break. Is weird, odd, strange, or just plain bizarre is really your cup of tea? Then, the Golden State Media Concepts Weird News Podcast will give you that fix. Can't believe it? Well, listen for yourself as we deliver the strangest news you definitely won't find on CNN or Fox. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Weird News Podcast. Welcome back. And, well, let's see. We were talking about the fun stuff of giving handshakes and giving high fives to your dog, right? Well, now I wanted to get into something that, as I said, there are a lot of mixed feelings about it. And it's, you know, giving or getting uh, dog kisses, which for some people is very, very cute when they see dogs looking at their kids but, I don't know, for me, it's kind of a mixed bag. I know that I'll let Reggie give me kisses, but I will not let Cookie give me kisses. Or at least not on the face. Because, well, <laughs> he has really, has unfortunately in some dental distress. But it's, <laughs> it's we're, we're trying to make her, her golden years definitely golden. But, so... I want you guys to think back, or actually I'll think back for you. And I recall a commercial, I don't know if it was for insurance or if it was for like cleaner or something, but it, it really stuck with me. <laughs> and just kind of picture a dog, like a mid-sized dog, to, um, and this dog is just at the commode and licking at the water. And, you know, he's very dehydrated, it sounds like. So he's looking up this commode water and then, then you start, then you kind of hear the door open and it cuts to this woman. She's back from work, it looks like, and she calls her dog. Dog comes running up and she kneels down and she's petting at him and he's, and she's letting him kiss her face. And, ugh. <laughs> That's horrible. One major thing I have to say is, why would you leave your toilet seat up? If you know, well, I can't even say if she knew her dog does that. But also, even if you don't have, don't feel like putting your toilet seat up, well, don't, uh, don't leave your bathroom door open. That's like one of the major things that I have, you know, one of the major rules that I have in my household is, you know, if the toilet seat is down, perfect. Make sure the trash is out before Regina get, starts getting into it, and the door can be open. If not, then at least have the toilet uh, lid down, or the or I don't even know the bathroom door closed. Either way, it's it's disgusting, <laughs> and I always get frustrated when friends come over and they do neither. <laughs> They leave the toilet seat up, and then they leave the door open, and the next thing I know, Rhodey is, like, half of his face is in the toilet. So, I do not want that happening with Regina, and maybe I should put a sign or something. But anyway, it's just, I can understand why people are very much so against it. And I have to say, I almost am 
that person I would rather not have other dogs, you know, kiss my face. Because I know what has, well, I don't really know what all has been in Regina's mouth. But I trust my dog over other people's dogs. Does that sound weird? Well, either way, to teach your dog how to kiss you or kiss someone, well, it's, I think probably just kiss you. You take a treat and you put it, oh, and you're going to be squatting down to your dog's level. You're going to put that treat right on your cheek. And then the dog will start giving, will start wanting the treat and will start looking at your face and then you give them the treat. And then you continue that until you don't even have to use treats anymore. You can just give the command kiss and it'll, you know, the dog will be fine. But I mean, dog kisses are for the most part harmless, but what about the people that don't like them at all? Just do not want them at all. And they're, they get upset if the dog even tries. Well, the great thing about teaching your dog how to kiss it's the same way that teaching your dog to speak is beneficial. And by say by me by saying that I mean, well, if you can teach your dog to kiss, you can teach your dog to not kiss. So be it goes back to that uh goes back to that consistency where, okay, you have your dog uh kiss your cheek. Now, if they continue to kiss your cheek, you will let them until you want them to stop. At that moment, you stop, stand up, and ignore them. And you do that until, well, that process is really kind of grilled into your dog's head. But, I mean, I should probably do that with, with Regina. Because, I'm going to be honest, like, since she's, since I've been home more, she's especially loving. And if I step out for even, like, a second, like, she is extremely clingy and wants me to stay there forever with her and i can understand like dogs don't dogs are basically their lives are in their are in this house in the house that you live in and well a lot of their day revolves around your day so i can understand the need for for that attention it's just just them knowing that it needs to be for sure that you're coming back. And that's always a very sad thing to think about. But a lot of our dogs don't know if we're going to come back. They, they sometimes think we're leaving them somewhere, which is really sad. Unless they're a really happy and trusting dog. Like, it's really sad. <laughs> um, after we took Regina to the vet this last Saturday, or let me back up. After... We dropped Regina off, like we had to pass her over, and she just would not, she was like looking back at us, like, please don't leave me, don't leave me. And she was just trying to get away, so she was actually carried into the, into the clinic. But second he, she came back, well, she was also a little bit scared, she didn't want to go anywhere else. But yeah, she was extremely loving, and she wanted to give those kisses, because that's how she wanted to show that she missed us and she and that she was happy that we were back for her. And we also kind of think that there's a piece of just her being a foster dog that, you know, as a very young puppy. So she's, I am surprised she doesn't have separation anxiety yet, which we need to nip that in the bud. But yeah, dog kisses. It all, <laughs> just another random thing that I thought of. Well, um, maybe some of you have seen Columbo by any chance. If not, well, uh, my mom loved it, so we always watched it. So we, we watched this episode, my husband and I, and it had trained Doberman. And basically this guy had trained their Doberman, his Doberman to, to basically attack someone by, by him saying kiss. And it actually is a very interesting story about how um, dogs can basically be trained by using any type of word. Like, their behavior doesn't have to match 
our understanding of a word. It could just be their understanding of the word. And this guy basically said, okay, kiss, and they would attack this guy. That's how the entire story started, actually. Like, this guy died, and they were trying to do um, take the dogs away. But, yeah, towards the end of the show, another dog trainer taught them a different uh, kill word. And it was just a very interesting thing to see. Like, honestly, uh, I'm trying to think. Kill was actually their her word for them to go and kiss someone. Like, you know, do little puppy attacks and stuff. But I just... That was a... I need to rewatch that episode. That was a really good episode. Hmm. Well, anyway. We are going to be talking about... Um, Let's see, roll over, and you know, roll over Beethoven, da 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 da. However that um, that song goes, but yeah, we're gonna be talking about that, and that'll be after this break. The Golden State Media Concepts Travel Podcast, the show that gives you advice on everything travel. We explore places you've always wanted to go, as well as giving tips for traveling in those places. We'll give you advice on the best sites for travel tips, information, and discounts. Join us as we travel the world, explore cultures, and meet new people. The Golden State Media Concepts Travel Podcast has got you covered. Download the GSMC Travel Podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type GSMC in the search bar. Alright, so we were just talking about doggy kisses, and now we're moving on to dogs rolling over. And I've always wanted a dog that I could roll over, with me telling them to. Because, to be honest, Rody was definitely a roller, but he only did it outside when he liked a smell in the grass that was not nasty poop. <laughs> I hope not. But... Yeah, I've had a family dog who also was, um, who also would like roll over in the, in somebody else's grass. Like, and it would be like the most perfect grass in the world. And she'd just look like she was having so much fun in it, rolling around in it. And I just, oh, and another dog that I remember very specifically, because it happened recently, um, there was a, another pit that was, off the side of the interstate, like on a ramp, and like he was just kind of rolling around in the dirt, so, like on the, you know, just kind of off the road. It was very interesting, very scary, but you know, we got him back to his owners, and oh my gosh, I never want to see Regina on a ramp like that. <laughs> but anyway, rolling over, I have a huge connection to, um, not even. It's more of like an earworm, to be honest. Like, the Beethoven movies, you know, is a, a movie that I remember watching a lot. Probably because it had dogs in it. But there was a song that was going, that kept going, Roller for Beethoven and something else. But, yes, I'm very inspirational in my singing. <laughs> but, yeah, I was very, it's just something that stuck with me for a very long time, and it just kind of created this obsession of mine to have a dog that could roll over, as I said. And, well, I'll be honest, I'm not doing a very good job at it. Um, Regina is still learning the basics. Well, not the basics, but just the... She's trying to master the basics right now. And one of those basics is lie down, and I struggle with that because, well, she just likes to hop up and hop down. is pretty ridiculous. But yeah, how you're going to teach your dog how to roll over. 
Well, I'm learning too. So what I've read is that you are going to put your dog in the down position. So have them lie down. Then you're going to have a treat in your hand and you're going to move your hand slowly around its head backwards, well, around its head to its neck. And then your dog ideally will turn his head backwards and won't stand. If they stand, well, you need to have them lie down again and start over. So once you get that motion down, where they start turning their head instead of standing up to, to get this treat, you are now able to move on to the next step. So as, the, as their head reaches back to sniff the treat, you're going to gently roll them over. And I say gently. And if they don't want to roll, don't make them roll because it's not all about you. Remember that. So you're going to give your treat to the doggy after they roll over. And you're going to praise them say how fantastic the, the, they are. The little roly-poly just likes to roll a lot. And I don't know. Just make sure that you're telling your dog well, basically having your dog connect that action with the word, with the command roll. Because, well, it doesn't really help if you just roll your dog and, well, they'll probably do it without any vocal, like a vocal change, exchange, sorry. Um, but it might be easier to just have a vocal, something that you could say um, to your dog to make them actually do this. It's a lot more satisfying too when you do that. Now, this is going to be a very process heavy kind of, kind of trick because, well, it is a little bit more difficult to do. Um, it requires a lot of trust in your dog and also a lot of trust from your dog. And it's going to require a lot of patience because you're going to be doing this, you know, for maybe a good five, 10 minutes throughout the day, just to kind of really reinforce and create consistency in how you're responding to their, to their actions and just showing them that, oh, well, it can happen at any time. Well, and again, it can get frustrating because, well, what if they don't get it? What if they're just struggling? And I mean, what I could say, just kind of comparing it to something that we all probably have experienced. Like, maybe there's a kid that is just getting off his training wheels and he's learning how to ride, um, ride a, a two-wheel bicycle. And, well, two-wheel. <laughs> Whoops, sorry. Uh, you're learning, they're learning how to ride a bicycle. And I'll be honest, like, whenever I was learning, it was a very frustrating thing for everyone. Um, well, everyone involved, which is me and my dad. Um, and my dad was not a patient man and he just kind of, you know, would give up after some time of me not being able to do it to ride, to ride a bike. So that's not a very healthy, conducive way to actually learn something. So you want to make sure that when you're teaching someone, you need, well, teaching your dog in particular, you need to have patience. Like they might not get it the first or the second or the third time, but eventually with consistency, you can get your dog to roll over. And I mean, basically keeping all of that in mind will make it a lot more, uh, it'll feel much better when your dog is able to consistently succeed at this trick. But I mean, oh my gosh, I'm so blind. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I need to change my prescriptions. Um, but all you really need to do is praise your dog when they do, when they do it right. Give them a treat. Make them feel like they're on top of the world because they want you to, you know, they want you to love them. They want to show that they love you. And if you start getting frustrated, maybe it's time to take a step back. Not storm off, just, you know, maybe talk softly to your dog, be reassuring, but take a step back. And you don't have to do it in one day. I mean, it's been weeks for me to try to give Regina to even roll over. So it's not, it's not the end of the world. 
I promise you, it's not. Um, I will say that it would be interesting to try to roll Cookie over because she seems to be able to do that a little bit. So I might encourage that behavior, but she doesn't even sit on command. She's a very infuriating dog for the most part. So I just, uh, I just don't know. I wish Cookie would listen a little bit more, but hey, that's, that's all I could really hope for. Um, a partial role. So yeah, um, we are going to have another commercial break. And it'll be our final one, as, as I usually say. And we are going to be talking about something that a lot of pet parents struggle with. Maybe some of them, maybe it's just my animals that cause a lot of grief. But yeah, medications. How in the world are you going to give your cat, your dog, the medication that they need? Especially when one of them, Mr. Cat, when one of them likes to spit it up and foam at the mouth. Yeah, this this little buddy did foam at the mouth to get rid of the, the chalkiness of a, of a medicine. But anyway, I am going to let you guys go. Enjoy the commercial. Want to find out what movies to go see? Then check out the GSMC Movie Podcast. It's your ticket to the latest movies, whether it's a new blockbuster event, romantic, comedy, or action flick. This show has got it all covered. They talk some what to go see now. Don't bother. What's hot on Netflix and everything in between? That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash movie dash podcast. When it's all about the movies, it has to be this new show. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. there uh we are back and we were talking about all kinds of dog tricks well it doesn't have to just be for your dogs but you know maybe it could be for your cat your ferret i don't really know what they can do or if you are a fan of marcel from friends you could always get a little monkey uh to just kind of have hang around and do all those fun little tricks but mm, i can't imagine that marcel would be very uh open to medication. Definitely not Eisen over here. He is, he is very much so (laughs) anti-drug. And he essentially just really likes to go about his day, eat his food, and just, just do what he wants. The second that you take out a pill bottle, he will be upset. Because, well, we have to restrain him because he likes to, likes to thrash about and he always escapes. And um, he always finds ways to spit the pill up. So when he was a young boy, um, Eisen was kind of uh, even more so of a jerk. And he would, as I said earlier, like foam after like just mawing on the pill because, well, he he just didn't like it. He wanted to scare us straight, I think. Um, but yeah, we had such a difficult time for him to, you know, get his meds. And like at some point, the vet finally, finally, after I got, after a very long, ridiculously long time, um, we got liquid medication for Eisen. He still thrashed, but there was no way he could like make that mawing sound, well, that mawing and the foam, and just, it was easier. He didn't like it. But, you know, as he has got, gotten older, Eisen has been, you know, been more mellow about medications, especially with how um, my husband and I 
really just kind of work together on it. And basically our vet told us to uh, take the pill, put it down his throat, his throat, and then just chase it with water. And you, you basically use a syringe to just kind of push, push it down into it, into that little mouth of his. <laughs> um, but yeah, there were a lot of things that I kind of learned from vet techs, like what we can do for our animals to make it easier for them to take medicine. Well, for one thing, um, making it into a game is always a good thing. Um, and maybe giving them like a tasty pocket, um, pill pocket. Um, Rody was not good about that. He honestly, um, really loved his peanut butter until we learned from our vet that his, he was, had very high blood pressure. So we needed to cut back on the sodium intake. So one of the vet techs actually suggested that we use marshmallows and we just put our, put the pill into the marshmallow and then you can give it to the dog and they'll love it. Well, Rody and I had a thing. I would get the marshmallow, I'd put the um, pills in there, and then I would have them sit, and then we'd play a little catch. <laughs> and that was actually something that was really, you know, it took the edge off of, you know, the reasons why Rody was on that medication in the first place. But it was something that we had, and I really loved it. But, you know, that's a good way to really create a bond with your pets, and then also to just feel like, I don't know, that, that you're friends, if that makes any sense. Or, you know, if you even want to go further, you can say a family member. But you know what? Let's talk about a way that you could potentially cause a food fight between you and your dog. And, well, it's another way that you can give them their meds. So this only works if the medicine that you're trying to give your pet is a liquid or a powder. Um, I don't know what to say with the, with the pills and stuff. I, you might want to check to see with your vet that there is, that it can come in a different form. Um, but never be afraid to talk to your vet to see if there's any other way that you can give your pet, a me pet medicine. That's how we actually learned about using a syringe full of water to chase the pill. So anything that they can suggest, you know, you can go for it. And like if the syringe and water didn't work, they had some backup plans. So I think knowing your pets the best would be really, would be really awesome there to just make sure that they're happy and comfortable and have a little have as little inconvenience as possible for both of you. And well, so this one thing I was telling you about, I was about to tell you about, uh, is actually, um, mixing your powder or the liquid into like some sort of, uh, tasty little treats. So maybe like peanut butter or cat food, whichever. And well, just take take a dollop of it and put it onto their front paw. Now, uh, pets don't really, at least dogs and cats don't really like this. They just, you know, make a move to like flick it off with their hand, with their with their hand, with their paw, and then you know the thing is gone. So you could get very lucky though, and your pet will actually start licking up whatever is on their paw. Uh, so. We've seen Eisen do that, do that a lot, but, um, we've never had him on the powder, uh, medication, so I don't really know how that would work out. Either way, this little boy, he has had a lot of different, different vets, actually. One that wanted to just have tests run over and over and over again, and then one that was basically saying, okay, you realize your cat is overweight. You need, you can either do this or I understand if you were, um, you know, if money is an issue, you know, just making sure that you have that conversation with your vet because like vets should not be guilt tripping you. 
I mean, already you're probably already feeling a bit guilty not being able to help your par- your your pets in you know the best way possible. So, yeah, never let a vet or a vet tech make you feel bad for what you um, can't do for your pet. Always focus on the what on the part where you can do something for your pet. And I'm trying to think of just one more thing. Oh, a wonderful idea. <laughs> so if the if the powder into or liquid does not work or they just keep on spitting out the the pill whenever you turn away, well what you can do is bring some treats and well get some treats and the medicine and you are going to take your dog or your cat for a walk. If your cat doesn't like going on walks, well, have some intense play. And you are going to basically get them so exhausted <laughs> that they will just take it. Um, and I mean, that's kind of how it works. Honestly, whenever Aizen is the tiredest, he is so compliant. Like, he never really complains about it. He'll try to run away at the end of it, or he'll try to go over to his bowl to demand more food, but we all know that he does it because he loves us. <sighs> I'm kind of surprised that Cookie doesn't have any medications to <laughs> to take care of herself. I mean, she does have a heart murmur, so... We should be having her on some sort of medicine. This is probably going to be a conversation I'll have to have with my vet. Because, well, I need to know my options here. <laughs> now, I really want to know from anyone else if, what kind of stuff do they do to get their pets to take a medication. Because some are really bad, some are very easy. And, I mean, I don't know if there's like an inkling of like stickiness like from the marshmallows regina will like pick up the pill and be perfectly fine so again different levels of <laughs> compliance different levels of of just acceptance <laughs> in a way but yeah i really do think that this is something that people really need to think about and you know trying to make this as you know trying to make medicine giving like the most calming experience as calming as possible you know back up you should try to make these these little sessions with medicine giving you should private you should really try to make them as stress free as possible and i think i've already mentioned like if you or if you have a pet that is being very, you know, very anti-medication or anti-anything, you know, it's not all about you. And also, well, you probably need to take a second to calm down yourself because once you get um, two stressed people <laughs> into a box, well, of course there's going to be a fight, okay? So I am going to let you guys go actually oh my gosh <laughs> um we Aizen and I will probably be just kind of hanging out and uh maybe just I don't know batting at balls of toilet paper or something he does some weird stuff but yeah I well, the both of us want to thank you for listening to the GSMC Pets podcast that was brought to you by the GSMC podcast network please oh please oh please uh, subscribe and leave a review for us. We love reviews. Check us out and subscribe to our, um, Facebook, our Instagram, and also our Twitter. So, we would like you to have a wonderful night, and thanks. You've been listening to the GSMC Pets Podcast, part of the GSMC Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcasts on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all of the shows from the GSMC Podcast Network. 
From movies to music, from sports to entertainment, from business news to weird news. Follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's podcast.